If you want to impress your family on a breezy day at the beach, you can do so by giving them a little welcome break from the wind. What do you think, everybody? All right. To be honest, buying a beach fence or a beach windscreen never really occurred to me. Until recently, when I was sitting on the beach on a windy day, happy as always because I was sitting on the beach, but I couldn't help but think it would be a little bit more enjoyable without the taste of sand and random beach debris in my mouth. So I went online and bought myself a beach fence for 85 bucks, which comes with this rubber mallet and this cool carrying bag, and I picked up a Sport Design beach windscreen for 28 bucks, which comes in a plastic sleeve. Were they worth the money? Well, you and I are gonna find out right now. By the way, I just hit 1,000 subscribers on my Beach Gear Guy channel. It's really exciting for me, and I just wanna thank you so much for subscribing and being a part of my Beach Gear Guy channel. Now, first of all, I will tell you that you definitely need a rubber mallet or some kind of hammer to pound down the hardwood dowels. The Beach Fence Company takes care of this for us by providing us with one. But you will need your own rubber mallet to drive in the beach windscreen poles. The polyester fabric is stapled to the top and the bottom of each beach fence dowel, so they don't slide around when I'm piling them down. The beach windscreen poles are not secured whoa, whoa, to the whoa, material, whoa. so things got a little crazy when the wind picked up. This may be a good time to mention that I would recommend having a friend help you set up any kind of beach wind blocker, especially on a windy day. Yeah, as you can see, it was a bit of a job trying to slide the poles back into the windscreen sleeves. But with a little patience and determination, I made it happen. All right, both of these beach wind blockers are all set. Now it's time to check them out, and see how well they actually work. Down right behind the beach fence, it's around zero. And when I slowly raise up the anemometer over the fence, it's well over 10 miles per hour. We're picking up some wind a few feet back, but it's still blocking most of it. So the polyester fabric does a great job blocking the wind. The Sport Design Beach Windscreen does a good job blocking most of the wind as well. Now as this dude is demonstrating right here, it's best to hunker down close to the beach fence to really enjoy its total wind blocking power. As far as issues go, one time the beach fence was pushed back some when it was hammered by 20 plus mile per hour winds. And another time a section of the fence fell over when the tide crept up and the sand got super soft. But beyond that, this beach fence always held its ground. When the beach fence is set up, it's 20 feet long and 32 inches high. And when the sport design windscreen is set up, it's about 15 feet long and 30 inches high. Now you can set up these wind blockers any way you want. It's the beach and who's gonna judge you? But the Beach Fence website shows a few classic setup shapes you can try out. Here are a few recommendations if the wind keeps changing directions on you or if you wanna keep the kids corralled in. And here are a few shapes you can try if the wind is constantly blowing from the same direction. As far as materials go, the Beach Fence is made of a quick dry polyester and is double stitched. The Beach Windscreen is made of a strong nylon and it kind of feels like a plastic tablecloth. Now as I'm showing here, packing up both the beach fence and the beach windscreen is pretty easy and straightforward. Now I really hope I haven't seemed too hard on the Sport Design beach windscreen. Last time I checked, it was selling on Amazon for just 24 bucks, so it's a pretty inexpensive way to block the wind at the beach. But if you're willing to fork over 85 bucks, for a good wind barrier, I would say the beach fence is the way to go. Thank you so much for hitting that like button, and I hope you take it easy at the beach.